Welcome along, I'm Carolyn Hulley filling in tonight. If you were here in Idaho back in March, no doubt you remember that big earthquake 6.5. It rocked the area. It was the second largest recorded earthquake in Idaho history. And since then, scientists have been studying that earthquake, the aftershocks and what could potentially happen next. Our Shira Matsukawa is here now with what they have found out so far. You've looked over this report. What have you found out? That's right, Carolyn. You know, that earthquake actually happened on March 31st and rattled a lot of nerves. So today I spoke with one expert who told me the shaking isn't over. From Boise to Cascade and Chalice, people from across Idaho felt this magnitude 6.5 earthquake back in March. On Friday, research professor in the Department of Geosciences at Boise State University, Lee Liberty, walked KTVB through what scientists have discovered since that earthquake happened north of Stanley. Just to be clear, the earthquake sequence isn't over. Liberty, along with a team of researchers, have been studying the earthquake its aftershocks, and the potential of another large earthquake happening. It's still in the realm of possibilities to have another large earthquake, as in something like a magnitude 5 or a magnitude 6. That wouldn't be a surprise simply because what we know about past earthquakes in Idaho, they were all followed by another large earthquake, um, you know, somewhere between six months and a year after the main shock. So it I'm not going to say I'm forecasting a large earthquake to come, but it's within the, the realm of, of possibilities. Liberty says since March, more than 1,000 earthquakes with a magnitude of 2.5 or higher have been recorded, and they expect to see those aftershocks continue. Because we do know that Idaho is earthquake country, we know that active faults extend throughout the state, um, and we know that you know this sort of earthquake only or often only happens once once you know, every 10 years let's say uh, and so there these sorts of earthquakes are are um, few and far between for scientists to study so and it was during this recent study liberty says researchers were able to learn more about what's known as the sawtooth fault so there's some questions that we still have uh, in terms of how far north does this fault extend um, and then also how far south will these aftershocks continue to um, be generated but what they do know is most of the earthquakes have now moved farther to the south towards redfish lake and they kind of align along um, what's been termed the sawtooth fault which is which has been known to be an active fault for some time now scientists are now using this research to get a better understanding of what hazards and risks are there so they can eventually apply it to other faults in Idaho. From my perspective, this is the perfect earthquake because it, it generated a lot of attention, but there was no damage and no loss of life. And Liberty also tells me researchers know the Sawtooth Fault is capable of generating earthquakes of magnitudes larger than 6.5, and that's one of the concerns they have. He says that's based on surface deformation that found from past earthquakes, they found from past earthquakes in the area, and uh, this earthquake in March didn't have any, so that's why they believe a bigger earthquake is still possible. He adds they're also especially concerned about earthquakes in the wintertime because of the increased potential for avalanches. Oh my Carolyn. goodness, a lot to think about and take right. in right there. Possibility. We can right, have a and, one. but it's always just good to be prepared you and ready. You bet. Mm -hmm. I'm, like he said, it was the perfect earthquake to right. study. That is wonderful. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for that.